Lance Mechanics here today, and I want to talk about a tool I'm seeing less and less, less and less technicians using, and it's very unfortunate. Um, let's go into story time. So I just watched a South Main auto repair video. Like, yeah, follow him. I love that stuff. I could spend months working with this guy. I imagine learn. As a technician, you never stop learning. Let somebody teach you. Absorb whatever you can. Become a better person. So uh, he's working on this 19 Chevy product, and to him, that wasn't old. To me, that thing's ancient. Just dealership mentality, unfortunately. Anything over a couple of years old, I, I consider ancient. For him, it was new. Fair enough. So he's going through all this troubleshooting, and fine, he, 100% he's usually successful, and he gets to the solution. Uh, with my thinking, I would have found the problem early on, and then I would have chased the solution. And the way I found the problem is I would have found the fix doing something very, very simple. And with these modern vehicles these days, we're asking a lot of the electronics. Uh, even simple circuits now, like light bulbs on LEDs, we're really pushing as far as we can with a 12 volt uh, system. Cars, honestly, they, if, to move forward, they gotta go to 24 volts. Uh, we've just overloaded these systems so much. And, you know, an alternator used to be able to, you know, put out, 120 amps you can full field it like well 60 amps on the 30 to 60 on an old car now they're, they're getting way up there it's ridiculous so we're asking a lot of these charging systems and batteries and we're getting enhanced flood lead acid batteries and agm and all this other stuff which you, you can't even test the same way we used to with the regular lead acid batteries uh they're putting charge controllers on the negative side to check the current flow there's so much going on in the world of technology on vehicles and as you push these systems to the limit, you're gonna start running into weird things and it's all related to grounds. So in this video, I wanna explain how important this one tool is and in the last shop I was in, I was the only one that had it. So it's, it's right here. It's nothing special. Jumper cables. And you're probably thinking, well, every shop's gonna have jumper cables. Yeah, for boosting the vehicle, but not for troubleshooting. That's where uh, this is, Something I, I explain to people, until you've been burnt by not having that, and you've seen the results of having something like that, you just, you can't articulate how important something this is. When I go into a shop and they only have that for boosting and not for troubleshooting, well, that's a big issue, because they don't understand how important it is. So, the reason I'm saying this is because I watched the video with South Main Auto, and when I get into weird electrical issues, the first thing I do is start adding grounds to the vehicle. And the easiest way to do that is to grab your jumper cables, put it on the negative post on the battery and take one side, put it on the engine, take the other side, put it on the frame and clear codes. And if they go away, you know, you have grounding issues. doesn't matter. See, the weird thing is when you start to lose grounds on a vehicle, they start finding the path, the least resistance. So they're going to start going through modules. They're going to start going through power steering racks. They're going to go wherever is convenient for electricity because it finds a way. And people don't understand grounds are the number one fault at least in the Rust Belt in Northern Canada, Ontario, number one fault and number one cause of failures. And it's a very difficult thing to trace. Uh, so usually people do voltage drop tests. To me, that's not enough. When you lose grounds, you're gonna have voltage all over the place. It may be an indication that you have a, a ground fault, but sometimes those voltage or the losing your ground causes modules to fail. So you're chasing issues that are related to it but the way i can articulate it is it may have caused seven other issues it may have caused another module to fail and you're chasing all these things and you should have started with the ground I, I know and some people may argue in the comments well that's not the proper way to troubleshoot well if i go out to a vehicle and i test the battery it's like whoa it's got 12.6 volts and there's nothing powering up i'm grabbing i'm grabbing my jumper cables and being a flat rate technician I want the quickest answer as fast as possible and I want to be accurate. Throw the jumper cables on, everything fires up. Okay, I'm chasing grounds. Let's push the vehicle into the, the shop. Why did I lose the grounds? That's my next step. But I'm seeing more and more technicians, they're not utilizing this simple, simple tool of just adding grounds. So I'll show you just on the razor an example of what I mean. So let's get into that. So here's just a simple demo of what I mean. So you, I'm, just, I'm just doing this for reference, black to negative. I, I'm gonna show you what I would do. I'd be putting both on the, the thing, but just 
keep it simple right now. Black to negative, one line at a time. And something simple would be like me going right to the chassis here and then trying uh, to trying to restart it again or seeing if my symptoms or the codes disappeared. If they did, I just did the simplest check possible to eliminate so much on the diagnostic double G. It was like my number one go-to thing. It, it's so simple. It's so quick. Uh, more technicians, more tradesmen in general need to get into this habit, I think, personally. So I hope that little demo was simple enough for you. That takes me 10 seconds to do. 10 seconds to save hours and hours of aggravation and troubleshooting. And if it doesn't make a difference, I've eliminated grounds. It's a very hard concept for people. And I find in the automotive industry, we're all about chasing powers and powers and fuses and this and outputs. Well, just go to the ground. The ground is the simplest thing. It's the most problematic thing on a vehicle these days with the cheap, cheap thin aluminums and all the other cheap let's put it this way we're asking a lot of a 12 volt system and we're really reducing the materials there are some vehicles i know a co-worker of mine experienced this he lost a spot weld on a hyundai he lost one spot weld and that thing went limp it, it bricked itself over one spot weld so he had to run a ground from the front engine compartment all the way to the rear of the vehicle to bring it back to life and that's just where we are in this time. Everything's seam sealed and spot welded with minimal, minimal, minimal assembly. And we're asking a lot of these vehicles. Unfortunately, manufacturers are, uh, they're losing their way in my opinion. So leave a comment, like the video, post, post what you think. This is what I'm imparting to people as they go to, you know, they learn to be automotive technicians. This is just something I've done for years and years and it saved me a lot of time and grief. And I'll just keep saying that. Grounds are the most important thing on a vehicle these days, especially as they get lighter and lighter. So, Lance Mechanics, have a good one.